I'm Lily Martin. I'm an American citizen, but a permanent resident in Syria. I've been living in Latakia about 22 years, married and have children. My background is a medical professional, though now I have been just writing. Um, I, I have many articles that, which have been published uh, about the Syrian crisis. So how has Latakia changed besides the sheer number of people? So what we've learned during the, la during the war actually, the city rose from 1.5 almost to 2.5 million people. What kind of pressure does this put on the city? Uh, the city of Latakia has uh, accepted and absorbed the refugees. We have refugees from Palestine. We have refugees from the Iraq war. We have uh, now the newest refugees, which are from Kassab, one hour away, the Armenian refugees. And we've had refugees that have come from Homs and Aleppo. Uh, we have about 1,000 families living in tents from Aleppo at the sports city, very near here. Uh, we've been able to absorb all of these uh, refugees, and they are being cared for. They do have food and medical supplies. Uh, all the different organizations, plus the Syrian government, uh, the infrastructure to help the refugees is in place. So how would you describe the local war story here? What happened? Okay, we began with the uh, initial uprising in Dera uh, in March 2011. Then that jumped to Latakia after a few weeks. Uh, so by April 2011, there were the beginnings of protests in the street. The, uh, some of the protesters were peaceful and unarmed, but some did have arms and they quickly learned that by shooting at the police or security forces, they would get shot back. So what were the people who went in the streets? The people who went in the street, a lot of them were um, maybe poor, uneducated or undereducated. Uh, they thought that they were going to get something out of a revolution. They had the wrong idea, the wrong opinion. They they perhaps were manipulated or brainwashed uh, by various satellite TV media in the Arab world, in Arabic only, that had told them uh, this is a real uprising, a revolution, and they were all from one community only. Uh, in other words, Syria is 18 different religious sects, but the uprising was from one sect only. It never had uh, support from other sects. Which was the sect? It's the majority sect, which is called Sunni. And uh, But the majority of the Sunnis are not I I uh, involved at all and know that it was a foreign planned uh, attack on Syria from the beginning for the purpose of political regime change. It was not a, a popular uprising and it never had the grassroots support. If it had grassroots support, the protesters, or even the rebels, as they're called, they would be among all 18 different sects, but in fact, they're one sect only. There has never been a Christian fighter, and there's never been a Druze fighter. Uh, this is one sect that is manipulating and coercing their uh, people, but not all of them are involved. In fact, the majority of the Sunni population of Syria uh, is not involved in any uprising or any revolution or fighting. They're just trying to survive and to get through this. So what are your sources? Where do you get all this from? Well, I live here, so I'm an eyewitness. I lived through a four-day battle right across the street uh, from my home. Uh, my neighbors have been killed. My friends have been killed. I know their stories. Um, I know people that are in the Free Syrian Army, and I know people that have run away to Turkey, and I know people that have run away to Egypt. Uh, so I know what their thinking process is, what their motivation, and then I read a lot. Uh, I research uh, online. I don't uh, just listen to the TV news. I, I use uh, uh, 
the media online to go from story to story and author to author until I could get to the truth. But what, what kind of websites would you recommend worth reading regarding Syria? Um, uh, worth reading in regards to Syria. I would say uh, anything that Pepe Escobar has written from Asia Times is worth reading. I would say many articles on opednews.com are worth reading. I would say things that Michael Collins has written, Franklin P. Lamb. Uh, is uh, another American here who's doing a lot of writing. Um, Seymour Hirsch has just come out with a mm. huge article, The Red Line and the Rat Line. Uh, there's plenty of things t to read. And I would read things uh, from all aspects. In other words, I wouldn't just read one aspect or one side of the story. I like to read even things from Al Jazeera, which is biased, even things from BBC, which is biased, and CNN. However, I'm going to read it because then I can compare it and I can dissect it and know where the lie is and where is the truth. Okay, so if you would have to summarize in a few sentences how uh, Latakia, besides the huge refugee uh, problem, uh, the city is facing. How was it involved in, 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 in the war? Well, I would say that Latakia has been very peaceful and calm uh, since the, the late summer 2011. In late summer 2011, there was a huge battle of foreign terrorists. Their leader was a Chechen and he was called the Emir, the Prince of Latakia, even though he was not Syrian and could not speak one word of Arabic. He was from Chechnya, but he had foreign fighters and they fought uh, and killed many, many uh, innocent civilians as well as uh, Syrian army and security forces. Since that time, we went into peace and calm once those foreign fighters had been either killed or captured, went into peace and calm, and we've been okay until recently. Just recently, starting on March 9th, we started to have missile attack. Long-range missiles have been uh, falling on the city, sometimes two a day, sometimes a few days will go by and there's no attack. But they've been killing uh, people. In other words, the, the police and military are never targeted. All of the missiles are landing in residential neighborhoods which have no military value whatsoever. In Sheikh Daher, a huge one uh, landed and 15 people were killed immediately. Where do they come from, the missiles? The it? missiles are coming from the Turkish border. They could be just over the border or just inside the border. But these are long-range, sophisticated missiles. These are not homemade things. Uh, they have to be long range because they are coming from quite a distance. From here to the Turkish border is one hour drive. It's so, like six, 65 kilometers, something like right, that? Right. In a car, it's a one hour normal drive. Yeah. And so they are in those areas uh, near Kasab and above Idlib and near the city of, uh, it's a village actually called Selma. Mm -hmm. And from Selma, you can walk to Turkey. From Kasab, you can walk to Turkey. From Idlib, you can walk, but it might be take you, you know, a whole day. So these are areas that are right on the border, and this is where the problem is that these terrorists are being aided and supported by the Turkish government. Those terrorists might not be Turkish, and they might not be wearing a Turkish uniform or using Turkish weapons but they are being aided and supported by the Turkish government. Thanks a lot. You're very welcome. Thank you.